This is Echo 3, and let's discuss an alternate means for generating power besides using the radioisotope thermoelectric generator. Now in the game, this is a great part to use, but it does have some limitations. If you are playing a science or career mode game, you are familiar with the concept of the technology tree. Now, we're gonna use some parts that are only in the middle of the tech tree. Over here in the 90 point category, we have the turbo shaft engine, and it has an alternator on it that lets it generate electricity. So we're gonna use it as part of the base of our power generation. Then we're gonna use another part, we're gonna use the light duty rotor, which is in the 160 science point category. And together, we can combine them to form a power generator. So if you are much earlier in the tech tree, the RTG will not be an option for you. Now, if you are playing sandbox mode, obviously this really won't apply to you and the RTG will be a much better option. If you are in a game where you are limited by your technology and need a consistent form of power generation, I'm gonna show you a different technique that might be a good option for you. For demonstration purposes, we're gonna create a small rover and we'll just call it the Poor Kerbals RTG just to demonstrate these techniques. In most cases, your solar panels are gonna be a very good option. And anywhere really closer than Dres, solar panels work better than the RTGs as long as you have somewhat consistent sunlight. You might also find that the fuel cells work well depending on what kind of ore concentrations you have and how your certain situations are set up. Depending on your needs, we're gonna set up a different means. We're just gonna place a typical turboshaft engine. Nothing fancy, I'm just gonna turn off the brakes on it just because I don't wanna accidentally cause it to stop moving when I brake the rover. The next thing I'm gonna put on is the light duty rotor. And we're just gonna go ahead and slap it on top. I put it on upside down. I can greatly reduce the motor size and power on this thing because all it has to do is spin the turboshaft engine. That's it. So I'm gonna spin both of these together. The turboshaft engine generates electricity based off of how fast it's spinning. And it can generate up to 0.4 electrical current. The RTG can generate up to 0.75 electrical current. So this will not be able to produce as much electricity as the RTG, but again, this is much earlier in the tech tree than what it is. Now, I'm gonna put the structural piece up there and strut the top to the bottom. This will keep everything that I don't want to rotate from rotating. It's just gonna have our light duty rotor rotate the turboshaft engine. Our power generator itself is complete. Now for the sake of demonstration, I'm gonna throw on a command chair and some four wheels just so I can show what it works like as a rover. Some real life craft that actually use RTGs would be the Perseverance and the Curiosity rovers on Mars. RTGs work by generating electricity from the heat of the radioactive decay of plutonium-238. So they do have to harden the electronics on the crafts because of the radiation. It also can mean that if you are dealing with real life people or animals, you'd have to worry about radiation and shielding. So if you are playing with some kind of realism mod that you have to deal with radiation, something like this might also be a useful tool for you so you don't have to shield your Kerbals. I'd like to highlight what I'm doing here with the wheels. I'm using the absolute move tool to help the wheels be exactly level with each other. That's not something you really need to mess with for a small rover, but if you're dealing with something that's larger, especially something that has more than two sets of wheels, I would definitely recommend using the absolute move tool to make sure that they are perfectly in line with each other. I'm turning off steering on the back rover wheels just to make it a little easier to steer. Now let's go ahead and pull up an RTG. You can see that it costs 23,300 funds as opposed to our total rover cost, which is just over 4,000 funds. So adding an RTG on this would greatly re increase the cost of the whole thing. So if you are short on funds in a career mode game, maybe a system like this will be a better solution for you. Now, if it's sandbox or a science mode game where funds aren't an issue, then go ahead, use an RTG. We'll go ahead, throw Jeb on this and have him take it out and test it on the runway. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up some of our tabs here. You can see what's going on. 
I want to pull up the resource tab on the top right so you can see exactly what's going on with our power generation. Right now we're full. I'm going to start turning on the rotor itself. Now it's going to draw a little bit of power to get going, but the faster it goes, you can see our turbo shaft engine. It generates more power the faster it goes and it will generate a full 0.4 electrical current once it gets up to its speed of 460 RPMs. And our small light duty rotor at less than 1% power is able to get it spinning over the amount that we need. So you can see, just watching what's going on as we slowly increase speed, the power generation goes up on the turbo shaft engine and then we'll be able to drive our rover around using a little bit of electricity and we can turn down our power, our torque on the light duty rover as we get going a little faster. And it looks like we're working out pretty well here so far. I did notice in testing that as the rover moved around, some things caused the turbo shaft engine to slow down and I had to increase my torque at different times to keep the rotor speed up, but I was still generating more power than I needed and was able to keep things going pretty well. So for a stationary base, this might be a really good idea, especially something on the MUN, where you might have to deal with around 18 hours of darkness and solar panels are just maybe not the best option for you. Jeb looks like he's enjoying out this new rover pretty well. Do you have any hacks or game exploits that you have discovered that work well for you? I've highlighted some different ones with my crack and drive videos and with the engine exploit with the Cow 1000, I am able to generate electricity that way. This is just a pretty simple way to do it that would actually work if we had wind on Kerbin. I could use a turbo shaft engine and have propellers spin in the wind to generate electricity. Unfortunately, that is not something we really have in the base game so I can't make windmills that generate electricity. That'd be really cool to be able to use something like that on Eve or Duna to generate electricity as opposed to using RTGs or solar panels. Just be interesting if we had a few more options. Be interesting to see what Kerbal Space Program 2 has for us as far as options. And it looks like we're gonna need to do more with base building. I am Echo3. Thanks for joining me on this discussion on an alternate means for generating electricity. I will hopefully see you next time.